everybody. I'm Tony Fleming from Fleming's Ultimate Garage. Thank you for joining me on a piece of history today that is few and far between. This may be the only one of its kind left in existence right here. We have uh, here, which I'll present you in just a minute, called a Deluxe Marty Report. Kevin Marty received the records from, uh, from Ford Motor Company, telling him the build quantity and uh, the options and broken down for us. He's provided us that report. It comes with this car. It is a cool, cool piece of documentation because that's probably the most important part when you're thinking about, is my car really what my car said it was supposed to be? And this right here authenticates all that. That's gonna be awesome. Secondly, this is a great looking car on top of it called a tuxedo edition. So the white with the black uh, package here. Nice, nice touch. And lastly, this is the last, last, last of the Mustang GT. The last of this Mustang GT till much, much later uh, when uh, the Fox bodies came out. So with this car here, the likelihood of ever seeing another one again, even like this car, is so slim. So we're gonna take a few minutes, see what kind of options this car has, what kind of restoration we're talking about, what kinds of things make this different than others, and then uh, we're gonna go for a drive. All right, so what we have here is called the Deluxe Marty Report. You can get a Marty Report, which is this uh, small report here. The Deluxe Marty Report gives us the uh, window sticker that would have come on the car, uh, the Marty Report, and then also the Deluxe Breakdown of this car and options, which is really cool. And then they supply by Ford, which is Ford authorized, by the way. It's got their logo on it and a special seal. They authorize uh, them to reproduce the VIN tag for the door, right? The original one's still on there, but this is the one that Ford authorizes them to produce if you order this deluxe report. It's pretty expensive. However, it authenticates this car and it breaks it down there uh, that just uh, two of these cars had the blackout hood treatment, the tuxedo package is what it was called. So I just wanted you to know that that right there is a key component to a car like this, okay? So lastly, uh, we have that great looking Wilmington white and two-tone uh, tuxedo black paint. And then we have here, or Raven black paint, sorry, depending on the manufacturer. We have our correct chrome GT wheels here, right? Wrapped inside here are disc brakes. A lot of times we forget to ask about those because these cars didn't all come with disc brakes. Kind of have your choice of tires here. We have in the photos, polyglass tires. And at the Kermo, we have the radial tires on here. They drive much better with radial tires. Polyglass tires would have been more correct. They don't drive as well. Uh, your choice, you'll have to figure that part out, whichever one you want. Chrome and stainless has all been redone. Spoiler looks so good on the car. And then we have a nice, nice body lines where everything, the gaps, the vents, all of that stuff looks good. The boot is the right color. Lastly, let's look at the quality of the paint because that's an important piece of it here. Come on up and check that out. And look at that, this is black paint. Black paint's really hard in the lights to make look good, and this looks great. And then if I peek right here, what's that? Oh, that big hood scoop there, gulping in air for the 351 Four Barrel Cleveland. All right, so some people don't care to look under the hood, some people live for it. I like to do this part here for everybody, just in case you had you know, this car in your garage, you wanna to go to a car show, something like that, you can explain the things to the people that you're getting. So we have an original 351 engine, okay? This also has some things on it that you forget to ask about. Keep in mind that your modern car comes with power steering and power disc brakes. Well, these cars came with drum brakes, uh, manual steering, no power brakes, things like that. But however, this car was ordered correctly with power brakes, power disc brakes, okay? And it has power steering and it's all detailed inside here. Quite honestly, it's slightly over restored. Uh, the paint inside the engine compartment is a little nicer than it would have been in the factory circa 1969. I don't hate it for that, but I just think it looks really, really nice. I just want you to know that up front. Uh, but things like the horns are in place like they're supposed to be working. And many times people say, well, what's the big deal about horns and all that good stuff? Well, a lot of times these horns aren't even there. They don't work or the wiring is crusty and I'm looking at all the nice colored wiring and the correct decals in the right place. It just is a nice finished product. And that says to me that the restoration uh, might have been a little bit nicer than some of the others that are out there. All right, so why is the back of this car important? Well, this is the year that the GT shared with the Mach 1. You couldn't get a Mach 1 convertible. You wanted a convertible Mustang, you had to get a Mustang or a Mustang GT convertible. The GT, so few were produced compared to the Mach 1, which makes it even more rare. You get that great looking exhaust back here, the simple fact you can see into the top and this cool call out of the GT badge here instead of it saying 
uh, Mach 1. Why is that important? Well, because when you're talking about cars with low production figures, right, that are original style cars, they have more value. They go up in value faster and they tend to be better collector items. This is a great looking car and most people will know that if you, even if you took this emblem off of here, they would know from this signature uh, tail light that we have a, a Mustang GT and I think that this is great looking color combination as well. Looks so nice from behind. All right, I always like to have a shot of me walking up to my car, thinking about how cool it looks, right? But I know that, that other people are gonna get to see that most of the time. I'm gonna spend my time in here and I wanna share that time with you right now. So for instance, think about this. Think about going to dinner with, uh, with another couple or taking the kids out for a drive in a car like this. This is a different car than your SUV. Your SUV is an awesome vehicle, right? Or maybe you drive a, a sports car every day and those are great cars. However, they are not this car. This car makes a rumble. This car has a mechanical feel to it. It's very visceral, right? You feel the, the engine power. You feel the, uh, the vibrations of the drivetrain and the power that it's making as it's putting the power down on the, the wheels. And then I see little things about the car that make me say, okay, this car is a little nicer restoration than others. For instance, like the footwell lighting works, the door lighting works. You say, Tone, isn't that supposed to work? Well, yes, I agreed it's supposed to work. However, nine times out of 10, it does not. You know why? Because it costs a lot of money to make all of this stuff continue to work with all new wiring and lenses and bulbs and yada and yada, it goes on and on. This also has full gauges here, which is really nice instead of just light. So you got your 120 mile hour speedometer, you got temp, you got oil pressure, you got alternator, factory AM FM stereo in there, right? Climate control, bucket seats, nice mats, nice carpet, nice top. Uh, I don't know, I get excited about a car that's restored because I know what the effort it takes to get in it to do that. But when you get in this car, it just feels good. And I know that going with somebody in it uh, with the top down and the rumble exhaust going back, you're gonna have an awesome, awesome time. We gotta figure a way to get this in your garage. All right, so let's close up this video for a second. We're talking about one of two tuxedo editions built. They built almost 300,000 Mustangs that year. 300,000, I want you to think about that number, right? As a percentage. We're talking about manual transmission. We're talking about 351 four barrel. We're talking about a great color combination, a beautiful restoration, and the top goes down, right? The interior we looked at, we walked all on, didn't walk inside there. We sat inside there. We walked all around the car. We had a good time uh, checking it all out. And I think that by the end of the day, if you want to get a collector car, you want to get a collector car, this is how you start with something like this. Here you can take people out and you can enjoy the hobby. Watch, hopefully, this car continue to rise. You say, Tone, how do you know this car is gonna go up in value? You're right, I don't know that it's gonna go up in value, but I do know this for a fact that this car was $3,972.33 back in 1969, and it's no longer $3,792.33 in 2022. Anyway, call us, 301-816-1000. Tell you all about this cool Mustang GT convertible. Don't forget to uh, like the video down below, please. That helps us out a lot, I really appreciate that as well as uh, share with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We got new content coming out all the time. I will see you on the test drive. All right, we're taking out the Mustang GT convertible, right? Rowing through the shifter. I don't know if you guys know, but it's a rim blow wheel. The horn is actually buried inside the wheel here, which is kind of cool. The power steering is nice. The disc brakes add some confidence to the car. And I think about going out with another couple, maybe going out with the kids for a drive. I don't know, it's just kind of a game changer when you think about that stuff. The dash is still so retro. However, even though it's retro, it's, it's today's modern Mustang has, a, has a, a modern take on this dash. And you still have some of the same things. What I do love is this, is when you're looking through the here, the windshield, and you turn on the turn signals, you can see them in the hood scoop. And the hood scoop just makes the car look meaner, it's like adding this extra little bucket to it. Anyway, let's keep on driving. I'll stop talking. Enjoy the shifter moving through here and tell me what you think. Anyway, I'll see you on the next drive.